Well, today is a monumental day. You know why, Andrea? Why? I get my COVID-19 haircut today. Oh my gosh, you're dying. He's it's, dying for a haircut. It's been over two months and it's getting bushy and yeah. this is the day. All right, so what are we looking at today? We got the 2020 Toyota Highlander and boy, Toyota's done a really nice job with this. But since the last Highlander was introduced, there's a couple of new entries in the marketplace, namely the Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade. And we're going to reference them a little bit. Yeah. We are reviewing the Highlander, but I think it's worth talking about those. Oh, for sure. And when we look at this exterior, it is more handsome. It is more rugged, athletic. I really like it. I love that long hood. And I think, and you may disagree with me, from the side view, it looks a lot like the Range Rover Velar. Well, the thing is, it's funny you said rugged, because I think from the back three-quarter, it looks more elegant. The thinner uh, tail lamps, uh, maybe Velar-inspired, as you mentioned, yeah. but a, a little more elegant from the back three-quarter. No, I, I'm feeling more athletic. The one we're looking at today is the new Platinum version. We used to have Limited as the top model, now we have Platinum. Yes, and boy, this color, isn't it sharp? In the shade, it looks black, but in the sunshine, it's got this beautiful black cherry look. Yeah, we're not sure what it is. We looked it no. up online. <laughs> Which one do we think it is? I think, I think it was Opulent Amber. Opulent Amber, might yeah. be the color. Lexus kind of inspired looking wheels. They mm -hmm. do kind of look Lexus inspired. It's longer, it's wider than the previous model, and all of them now come with standard LED headlamps, yeah. but on the higher end trims, you get premium LED headlamps. That's right. All right, so let's get in and go for a drive. Let's you do first, this. okay? Okay. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. You know, speaking of COVID-19 haircuts, mm -hmm. some of our kids' friends, yeah. they're growing mullets. They are. One is. One <laughs> is. The others are growing it long because they like the flow. <laughs> Something about the flow these days. But the thing is, they get the flow, but they all wear baseball caps. I know. Speaking of flow, how do you think this thing flows? Really good. Yeah. You, you, the, when you compare it to the old Highlander. I had a lot of seat time in the old Highlander. I drove the gas and the hybrid. And although I appreciate the utility, the performance was just kind of blah. Yeah, it did everything really well. It didn't excel, especially in the handling department. Uh, and I think this one is much better. So four letters for you, T-N-G-A. That is the Toyota new global architecture which mm -hmm. is used in the new RAV4 mm -hmm. it's new in the new Sienna it's in this and it's a common platform which is improved handling and mm -hmm. I think that mission accomplished back to your point oh for sure it's night and day this performance excels over the previous model now I'm gonna get into the engines in just a moment because they didn't really change anything there uh, except for the hybrid right we're not really gonna focus on the hybrid today mm -hmm. because we don't have a hybrid here and we have to wait to drive it because they made a major difference. So the old hy a hybrid in the mm -hmm. Highlander mm -hmm. was a V6 and then the hybrid system. Mm -hmm. And now the new one is a four cylinder mm. and the hybrid system. Okay. So we have to wait to drive it to see what it's really like because it's down about 50 or 60 horsepower from the old model. Really? But fuel economy is way through the roof. Well, so that'll it's going to be an interesting drive. Yeah. So this one is what we're driving today, the gasoline version. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that they talk about with this car mm -hmm. is the turning radius is very good. It's excellent. Even when we were maneuvering, when we were doing our car to car, um, getting some exterior shots, it was just so easy for me. The steering is agile. Just generally for such a large vehicle, it's easy to get around in. You know our pal Brian Chow at Everyday yeah. Reviews, um, and I work with for many years on television, he mm -hmm. has the previous version Highlander and... Um, Hybrid. Uh, he's got the hybrid, but yeah. he said the suspension is a lot different. Mm. Now, he drives that car every day, so I'll take his word for it. Mm -hmm. He says, this just absorbs the bumps in the road and is more compliant, yet mm -hmm. has that good feedback at the same time. It does, and it's quiet. The yeah. cabin is quiet. Those are all TNGA yeah. attributes. Yeah. Now, you mentioned one thing about the mirrors. Oh, man, the mirrors. This is what I think. Here you have come with this. Well, you use sophisticated. Elegant, uh, I yeah. used athletic mm -hmm. and more handsome, but it's the mirrors. I feel like they just took a pickup truck, they took the mirrors off, and they stuck them on the Highlander. 
So speaking of mirrors, mm -hmm. you flick the switch there. Oh, sweet. Now the focal length is different though, right? Like yeah. when you put it off, you, you're looking way, way yes. back there. But when you put it on the monitor, this turns into a monitor now, your, your distance of focus is to there. Wow, that's really cool. So it gives you a really wide array of yeah. view. So I just want to say one thing before we get started. Sure. Toyota giveth and Toyota taketh away. Yes. All right, we'll yes. get into that in a moment. What yes. do you think? Okay, so first off, much nicer than the old model. Let's just say that. Some beautiful detail here. We've got some gorgeous stitching. A lot of patterns in here. You've got the two-tone color, of course, that's in the platinum. Lots of storage. Then you've got, which is to me so dominant here, this 12.3 inch screen, which is only available in the platinum vehicle all the other models you're going down to an eight inch screen so which i think is think of the, missed the boat on that one yeah so think rav4 is eight inch that's that's a reference point okay so when i sit in here this screen is beautiful it's it's dominant in this but throw in an eight inch and I think that it's just not going to be the same. I haven't seen it. That's the thing, because this is the first Highlander I've mm -hmm. seen. Because, of course, with COVID-19, we're limited by what vehicles we can get. So I, I want to wait and see on that. Now, I'm just going to throw a couple of names out at you because okay. um, I think things have changed in this size space. Mm -hmm. Telluride, Palisade. Mm -hmm. We recently had the Palisade. Yeah. And that premium interior compared to this premium interior, how does it fall? Yeah, this falls short for sure. Um, I find that the, the, I found that the Palisade really had that luxury feel, you know, some of these upscale materials. But I do want to say, when you're comparing the old model of the Highlander to this, this is so much better. But they're missing something, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think they could have done it by putting this 12.3 inch screen in every model i don't know like i don't know what what the cost is but obviously they have to get people to spend more money right and yeah. that's called a grade walk so they add in goodies and the more goodies you get the more they charge and people who want this um will maybe pay for it mm -hmm. and it's a it's a big jump over a telluride or a palisade so they too have this size screen but they have it in more trims like yeah. in the Telluride, that size screen is on all of them. Yeah. And this one, you got to go top banana yeah. at, at uh, almost $56,000. Yeah. So you know, that's disappointing. Now, somebody sent me an email just a couple of days ago, and I never really mentioned it in reviews, mm -hmm. but now that he's pointed it out, it's worth pointing out. Mm. So this has the captain's chairs, mm -hmm. seven passengers mm -hmm. on the top trim. Mm -hmm. And he asked the question, why don't manufacturers allow you to have the bench seat with the top trim. Sure. Like you've got to go sort of mid grade yeah. and then when to you get go, eight seats. To get eight seats. Yeah. It's like I want all the luxury, I want the big screen, but I want to be able to take eight people as mm. a minivan alternative, right? I'm and surprised that Toyota doesn't mo compromise on that. Most of them do that. You go up to the, the top trim, you get the captain's chairs, mm. and uh, it would be nice if they gave you the odd option. That's a very good point. I don't yeah. ever really thought about that. Really good point. Let's talk about space too, mm -hmm. because it is a seven, eight seater vehicle. I think Toyota's done a nice job with the space in this. The cargo uh, is. Uh, uh, I just want to say something Toyota giveth and Toyota take it away. <laughs> you want to hear what it is? Yeah, let me know. The trim here yes it's still there in mm -hmm. the in the center of the dash but okay. it's much smaller mm. it used to go all the way across now mm -hmm. it's split into two mm -hmm. this center armrest is way smaller the cargo area in here mm -hmm. you used to be able to get like a ton of stuff in there it's big right. yeah. but it's not as big not as the, the old one yeah. so in space yeah they do have some nice features like this now has wireless charging for your phone yeah. but the cargo area in there isn't as big but well, you want to talk about the back I want to talk about the back. I think the captain's chairs are quite comfortable. Lots of leg room back there. Cargo space is much better than the old model. Um, so Toyota is more competitive now in that area, which is really important in a seven, eight seater vehicle. So the space is six centimeters is what they added, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. to the cargo area. And a lot of that is with the third row up. So there's mm -hmm. more space uh, when you're using all of the seats. When, this, when the seats are down, it's just enormous, right? Yeah. And the other thing they improved is the, the track. Um, the second row seats slide fore and aft yes. more. So that gives you more flexibility. Right. The, as you said right off the beginning, they had utility down. Yes. Uh, now they've just added in a little bit more 
panache. Yeah. Is it enough panache? No. It's not enough panache. <laughs> I love the way you just go, no, this mirror isn't going to do it. Well, that that's not going to do it. But you, you could sway me if you gave me a 12.3 on all trims with the, with the screen. There you go, Toyota. But how about Get Andrea. this... Okay, go ahead. How about this sunroof? Well, you how know me. That? I, I I don't like su sunroofs. I so got it open for a bit. I'm going to close it while I drive. How's that sound? Oh. See, I would never pay a lot of extra money for a sunroof. I would. <laughs> guess what we so have? So does that mean? Does that? Oh, yeah. Guess what we have? A, guess what we have in our car? Yeah, yeah. we have a sunroof <laughs> and a big one. <laughs> a big one, because Andrea likey. Um, Most people do like a sunroof. Yeah, I think you're I'm the odd, odd man out. I'm odd, for yeah. sure. Um, one thing we forgot to mention about, while it's kind of inside and it's kind of outside, mm -hmm. the back tailgate mm -hmm. is way faster. It used to be the world's slowest tailgate. Mm. It would open at a snail's pace. And on a rainy day, when you got your hands full of groceries, mm -hmm. that was a pain. So now it's faster. But what they took away, Toyota give it and Toyota take it away, the split tailgate with the glass that would open up independently. I love that. Especially if you've got a dog, right? Oh, I love that. And now it's gone. Let's get into some important things like safety. So we talked about it before. Toyota mm -hmm. does a great job with their Toyota Safety Sense. Mm -hmm. This says Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, but they're going up another level. Oh, see, it's telling me I'm uh, wandering in my lane. Mm -hmm. um, they've Keep your added, eyes on the road, hon. They, Keep your eyes on the road. They've added blind spot and rear cross traffic alert yeah. as standard equipment. Fabulous. The other thing is vastly improved backup camera, especially with that big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, super like HD and you get the, uh, you know, around the bird's eye view, they call it. Mm -hmm. So those sorts of things are all certainly welcome. Mm -hmm. um, the engine is carried over 295 horsepower V6, yeah. eight speed automatic transmission and the new platform that we talked about. Yeah. So they've got the same engine, but why does it feel so different? I think it's the calibration of the transmission. It must could be. be. Could be. Now, uh, that's more horsepower than the Telluride and the Palisade. Not by much. Yeah, they're all roughly in the same they area. They are. What they have, though, is on the higher end trims, they have an all wheel drive system with torque vectoring. Mm. And this one has the terrain management here. Mm -hmm. So you have the ability to, you know, if you're in snow or sand or, or rocks and mud you have that mm -hmm. that's sort of on the higher end trims but what it does is it shifts power from side to side mm -hmm. uh, the torque that is as you're going through the corners so obviously you get all-wheel drive for traction but all-wheel drive for handling and um, that I think is maybe the difference maker is that could maybe be. what I'm feeling yeah could be okay let's do this it's pretty good that's, sounds good oh yeah. there's a there's, <gasps> No, it's a Subaru oh, wagon. Oh, they're trying to beat us. You the legacy. Beat us. The legacy. <laughs> He's got a right-hand drive from Japan, Subaru legacy wagon, and he couldn't beat the oh, Highlander. Oh, no. No. Now, we did go up to legal speed limits and then slowed down. The speed limit along here is what? 80. What am I doing? Uh, 77. There you go. Nicely done. <laughs> this vehicle on its own would go right to the top of the pack. Yeah. But those Koreans, they <laughs> the came Koreans. out. They had the Telluride and the Palisade, and they, they took it, they, they threw a spanner in the works. Yeah, so now and it's different. But here's the thing I can tell you. We're going to get into the pricing in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Toyota is very aggressive with their pricing. Um, $2,000 more to get the hybrid on the Highlander. Um, oh, and for a lot of people, because of the fuel savings, yeah. it would definitely be worth it. This Highlander starts at an attractive roughly 40000 but that's mm -hmm. front-wheel drive only. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way up to how much for this one? 56000 and that is a wow. Now here's the thing, is this worth it? I'll give you the answer. It starts with the letter T, Toyota. Yep, brand <laughs> loyalty, brand. here we go. Toyota has earned it, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Over the years they have put out product after product that has been great, and guess what? How many Toyotas do you see on the road? Old ones that just keep on going. The thing is, they have amazing resale value. Yeah. We know that, which means their leasing rates and everything are much more attractive because of that. So Toyota is in the driver's seat, pardon the pun, to be able to charge a slight premium for them. Yeah. But uh, if you're price sensitive, those other ones are great vehicles as well. For sure. Now, if they didn't exist, I think this would be at the top of the pile. I agree. I think compared to the previous model of this Highlander, it excels. But compared to the others, 
We're missing just a little bit of something, aren't we? Yeah, panache. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer's cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get access to exclusive and powerful savings. The link is in the description below.